One of the coolest stunt series of all time has to be the Indiana Jones raft escape in Temple of Doom, where Indy and company jump from an airplane, drop for 15 seconds, land on a snowfield, slide down a mountain, fly off a cliff, and finally splash down in a river. But could you actually pull all of this off in real life? Would a raft act like a parachute? Could you survive this impact? And did Steven Spielberg actually marry Willie? Let's find out in Seven Elements. From the top, the trio of Indy, Willie, and Short Round move as one smooth group from inside the plane to outside the door and inside the falling raft. Problem is, this opening is really small. You'd probably have to jump one at a time and meet up mid-air or something. It doesn't derail the whole escape, but it'd certainly make things more complicated, which is bad when you're falling toward the ground. Number two. Would a raft actually slow you down in a fall? Yes, a raft's surface area is bigger than your body, or three bodies combined, and more surface area equals more air resistance on the way down, which equals a slower descent. It's not going to slow you nearly as much as a parachute, but it's still better than nothing. Number three, could you keep a raft right side up and stay inside during a fall? Maybe. Staying inside would be tricky, simplifying here, but if you can keep your collective center of gravity close to the raft's center of lift, you'll be okay. Otherwise, it's going to spin, rotate, tumble, and spill you out. Still, these dummies manage to stay right side up, so we'll say the odds are good enough. Number four, this landing would probably kill Indy, and you, and anyone else. Here's why. On the plus side, you've got three things going for you. Yes, the raft is slowing you down. Also, you're landing on snow, which has a little bit of give as opposed to a more rigid surface like dirt or cement. Third, you're landing on a little bit of a slope, so some of your speed or kinetic energy can continue with you rather than being totally absorbed in a complete stop. So much for the bright side, here's why none of it matters much. That snow we talked about, it's not very deep or fluffy. After less than a frame, our group's bouncing back up. It's better than landing on dirt, but not much. Second, body position. If you're going to survive any sort of fall from height, your best bet is a feet-first landing, like a parachuter, so the muscles and joints in your legs can take the brunt of the impact. But our group lands lying down, which exposes your head and vital organs to the full force of impact. Third, and most problematic, impact speed. They're moving pretty quick here. Exactly how fast are they falling? If you run the math and make some measurements, turns out Indy, Willie, and Short Round are falling at 44 miles or 71 kilometers per hour right before impact. So what does that mean? If it's been a while since your last mid-flight ditching of a Ford trimotor airplane using a raft as parachute alongside an archaeologist turned adventurer, this speed might feel a bit arbitrary. Is it fast or slow? Would it hurt a little or a lot? For the answer, we gathered data from a whole bunch of sources and created this chart. It shows your odds of surviving an impact with the ground based on how fast you're traveling right before you come to a sudden stop. For instance, if you land at 25 miles per hour, which would be like falling off a two-story building, your odds are pretty good. You're probably looking at bruises or broken bones, but you're likely going to survive. An impact at 38 miles per hour and your odds drop to 50-50, which means about half the time this speed is fatal and the other half you're looking at severe injuries. Our crew clocks in about here, 44 miles per hour. Chance of survival, mm, say 15%, not good. So don't try this at home or in the Himalayas. But it gets even worse. For obvious reasons, they use dummies in this shot and these dummies are lighter than their human counterparts. With more weight, the correct weight, the raft's going to fall even faster. It approach its terminal velocity and speeds of 65 miles or 105 kilometers per hour at impact, which is off the charts for survivability. So yeah, it's going to hurt, or you might not even feel a thing. Number five, after touchdown, the crew slides their way for 28 seconds without ripping their raft or being stopped by a tree. And there's a whole lot of them. Sure, a clean slide is possible, but it's really unlikely. Number six, the trio drops in a second free fall, this time to the bottom of a canyon. The raft's only moving about 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour in this shot, but remember its actual speed would be closer to 65 miles per hour. So what would happen in the real world? 
This one's a bit trickier because water's involved. Without recreating this landing at this location, there's no way to be certain how Indy would fare. Best guess, this impact is more survivable than the first, but not by much. Finally, did Spielberg actually marry the actress who plays Willie? True story. Spielberg and Kate Capshaw met in auditions, married a few years later, and are still together today. So, if you're a lonely bachelor whose figurative heart's been ripped out, all you have to do is direct a movie about literal hearts being ripped out to meet your sweetheart. And it probably doesn't hurt if your film is also the highest grossing of the year. From initial jump through washing up on the shores near Pangkot Palace, this escape sequence is hard to beat. Sure, there's only the tiniest of slivers of a chance you'd actually live to tell about it, but that's the power of cinema, the lure of a fun story, and the magic of Indiana Jones. That's it for our breakdown of Temple of Doom. What did you think of our review? How would you survive jumping from a plane? What movie should we fact check next? For more great videos just like this one, please like, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and remember, we are going to die!